At long last, the myth of man the hunter has been tracked down, lured into a trap, and beaten to death by a plucky tribe of Amazons led by Diana herself. The myth was then stripped of all of its meat and organs and every last tiny bone put to use in new weaponry, toothpicks, and jewelry. Man the hunter is dead. Long live Man the Hunter. Okay, as always, here are the facts up front. Uh, this is a new paper, but it is not new news. It's not exactly groundbreaking. It doesn't tell us much that we didn't already know about gender roles, past and present. It's all based on this new paper published in PLOS One, The Myth of Man the Hunter, Women's Contribution to the Hunt Across Ethnographic Contexts. Over the past 50 years or so, anthropologists have carefully documented evidence of women in foraging cultures who participate in hunting game. And they've generally found that it occurs often enough that no serious person has thought for quite some time that hunting was the exclusive domain of men in our past or in present hunter-gatherer communities. This paper combs through all of that research and compiles an overview of what they've discovered about the subject thus far, how many societies have female hunters, what weaponry and techniques women use to hunt, what size game women tend to hunt, and how women tend to deal with things like child rearing while hunting. The researchers started with 391 foraging societies around the world, and they narrowed it down to just 63 that had adequate data on gender. Of those, they found that 80% had data showing that women participated in hunting. 90% of those had some extra fun data to dig into. And so amongst those, they learned 46% hunt small game, 15% hunt medium game, 33% hunt large game, and 4% of these societies hunt game of all sizes. In societies where women only hunted opportunistically, meaning you see an animal, you kill it, small game was hunted 100% of the time. In societies where women were hunting intentionally, all sizes of game were hunted with large game pursued the most. Of the 36 foraging societies that had documentation of women purposely hunting, 13% reported women hunting with dogs, and 50% of the societies included data on women purposely hunting with children. Women hunting with dogs and children also occurred in opportunistic situations as well. I mean, yeah, how else is little Susan supposed to learn how to hunt? You come across an animal that needs a kill in, you kill it whether your kid's there or not. Makes sense. As they drilled down looking for more and more data, they obviously had to take from a smaller and smaller sample size. So we can't say that 80% of all of those initial 391 societies have female hunters. We need more data. And I'd be willing to bet that there is a an entire legion of anthropologists out there just champion at the bit to go out in the field and get it. This study also can't speak to the frequency of female hunters. That 80% figure is binary, meaning that it only tells us that at some point, 80% of those societies showed evidence that yeah, women here actively track, locate, and kill animals for sustenance. It doesn't mean that women did a greater or even equal amount of hunting as did men. It just supports what seems to have become a well-established fact, which is that many modern hunter-gatherer societies, and probably many ancient ones, don't or didn't have strict gender roles that would forbid an able-bodied person from doing whatever they can to help the health and safety of the larger community. We can look at certain physical realities about the majority of men and women that would see some differences in their relative roles. Most notably, you know, women tend to give birth and nurse their young, meaning that a portion of them will by necessity need to stay close to home for a significant amount of time. In those cultures, we tend to see women hunting only when the prey is located close to home. If the prey requires long travel away from the central village, then it's most likely going to be mostly men going out to get it. 
There are also certain tools and methods of hunting that are easier for men due to their statistically larger upper body strength. In societies that use bows, for instance, we'd expect to see more men than women hunting. But in societies that use atlatls, which require less brute strength, we'd expect to see more women participating. That's why this new paper specifically mentions the use of dogs to hunt. In societies where dogs are trained to help bring down game, women may be more likely to participate because there's nothing about a dog that requires testosterone. For more information on that, please check out the excellent 2022 documentary Prey about a nice young Comanche girl who uses her dog, plus some clever tracking and trapping to hunt an unspeakably terrifying hostile extraterrestrial being. Anyway, it's all very interesting, but just to be clear, Man the Hunter hasn't been a serious hypothesis for a very long time amongst anthropologists. Vivek Vivekachraman at University of Calgary wrote a really good history of that myth for the conversation last year, ending with his own experience living amongst the Batek people of the Malaysian rainforest. And he also ends with the idea that there's little evidence that hunting is a marker of social standing. And that's where I think the man, the hunter myth does persist today amongst the general public. The flawed idea bolstered by some evolutionary psychologists with a certain bias that our male ancestors hunted exclusively because it gave them status and access to reproductive success, and that women gathered because of an inherent weakness, a lower status, and a genetic or biological predilection for peace and love and child rearing, and that those behaviors influence the way that we're all wired today. That is just a huge oversimplification. You know, men in some societies may hunt for status, but they also hunt to protect themselves and their family, to feed themselves and their family. And women might experience a lower social status in many societies, but it's not because of their success at gathering, which in many societies provides a huge number of the total calories that a community subsists on. And gathering is actually really hard, requiring a a lot of specialized knowledge that tends to be passed along from generation to generation. And if you don't believe me, head out to your local forest and find a tasty treat that's not going to give you absolutely life-changing shits. So yes, women in foraging societies hunt And while the study is not groundbreaking, it is good research mapping out the the research to date. And I really look forward to hearing more from the anthropologists who are studying the roles of women in these communities. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.